Hello from Athens! Are you ready to explore one of the oldest ancient sites in Greece? Today we're going to the archaeological site of Mycenae, known for its megalithic Bronze Age structures. Let's go! The true origins of Mycenae are unknown. There's only a legend saying that Perseus founded the site and built its megalithic walls with the help of Cyclops. The Acropolis of Mycenae is surrounded by strong walls made of massive megalithic boulders. From a distance it seems that rocks are perfectly fitted, but if you come closer you can see that the cracks or gaps are filled with smaller stones, but considering the size of boulders, these spaces are almost invisible. The walls are also known as the Cyclopean Walls of Mycenae, as the ancient Greeks believed that it's impossible for men to move such big rocks, so Perseus must have instructed one-eyed giants to build them. An enormous sculpture marks the entrance to the Acropolis and it's actually the oldest monumental sculpture in all of Europe. The famous Lion Gate was erected circa 1250 BC. A triangular block of grey limestone above the lintel was carved with two standing lionesses with their feet resting on an altar. Their heads facing onwards are long gone and they were made either of steatite or metal. The lionesses were not only an emblem of Mycenaean rulers representing power, but also were a symbol of the sister and wife of Zeus, Hera, who was a patroness of woman, motherhood and family. However, there's a quite new theory claiming that the relief depicts griffins, which also represented military and religious power. The gate is almost 3 meters high and up to 3.1 meters wide. This huge architrave measuring 4.5 meters by 2 meters, as well as two upright stones, weigh around 20 tons each. The holes for the wooden doors and for the wooden bar to lock them are still visible on the upright stones. On the left there's a niche hollowed in the rock that probably served as a guard post or a place to keep guard dogs. Some of these boulders might weigh as much as 200 tons. 
We can see now the prehistoric cemetery dating back to 1600 BC. Its official name is Grave Circle A. It has a diameter of 27 meters. A double ring of slabs encircles the cemetery. Presumably the space between them was filled with rubble and was covered with horizontal blocks to resemble a strong wall. It was a burial place of high-ranked and wealthy people. There were found six shaft graves, up to four meters deep with 19 skeletons, nine men, eight women and two children. Each shaft contained rich burial gifts, such as full sets of weapons and jewelry. There were also found five golden masks. Altogether, there was more than 15 kilograms of gold found, and among all these priceless Mycenaean funerary artifacts was the famous Death Mask of Agamemnon. After this discovery, Heinrich Schliemann exclaimed, I have gazed upon the face of Agamemnon. Recognized as the first people to speak Greek language, the Mycenaean civilization dominated ancient Greece during the mid to late Bronze Age, around 6050 to 1100 BC. The site of Mycenae, located on the Argolidian plain in Peloponnese, is the most important and the richest palatial center of the Late Bronze Age in Greece. The Mycenaean society is known for their exquisitely crafted precious objects, monumental architecture and militaristic culture. Although we don't know much about their foreign or domestic policy, there is more than enough evidence that they traveled to far remote places and traded with many different nations. Cyprus, Sicily, Mesopotamia or Egypt supplied Mycenaeans with silver, copper, glass, gold and got olive oil and wine in return. Mycenaeans are known as great warriors due to the large number of weapons found in burials, war scenes represented in their art and information preserved by written records called Linear B scripts. At the very top of the Acropolis are remains of its central structure, the Megaron, which originally consisted of a columned porch, vestibule and main chamber, where probably the throne of the Mycenaean king was placed. Megaron was the precursor for the classical temples.
thanks to the underground cistern at a depth of 18 meters and a clay pipe, the citadel and the neighboring hills were supplied with spring water. It was a brilliant technological solution. The Corbelt Tunnel had a total of 85 steps. Have you noticed the shape of the triangle is present everywhere? Sadly, the entrance is closed. We're walking now through the north gate. It was probably an unofficial entrance to the Acropolis. Built as well in 1250 BC, is much smaller than the Lion Gate. It's only 2.3 meters high and around 1.4 meters wide. Walking down the hill, we can admire more of the Cyclopean walls. There's actually a type of stonework called Cyclopean masonry. According to the American scholar Harry Peck, we can divide it into four categories. These walls might be assigned to the second type, polygonal and fitted with precision, whereas the walls next to the Lion Gate are perfect examples of the third type. The stones are arranged in courses, they have identical height, but they are of different sizes. Originally, the walls reached even 8 meters in thickness with a total length of 900 meters and they enclosed an area of 30,000 square meters. Outside Mycenaean fortifications, there is a magnificent structure known as the Tomb of Clytemnestra. It dates back to about 1300 BC and its dromos entrance is 65 meters long. The tomb is named after the wife of Agamemnon, but we don't know for whom it was actually built as Agamemnon, the conqueror of Troy, as well as Clytemnestra are only mythological characters and there is no good evidence of their existence. However, a German self-made millionaire and amateur archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann proved to everyone that every legend contains a grain of truth. Looking for clues in Homer's works, he discovered in 1870 the city of Troy and in 1873 conducted the excavations in Mycenae. The burial chamber has a diameter of 13.4 meters. The stones of the burial chamber are made of precisely cut and stacked limestone blocks. The tomb is protected by two sleeping Cerberi. The tomb of Clytemnestra was excavated by Schliemann's wife, Sophie. Sometime later, a woman's grave was discovered in the access way, but the inner burial chamber was found empty. The acoustics here is better than in the Great Pyramid in the King's Chamber. Or just trust me on this one.
Dutch Liman tracked down sites in Greece associated with the Mycenaeans, who were the enemies of the Trojans in the Iliad. Altogether, he discovered plenty of Mycenaean cities, for example, Mydea, Tyrans, Pylos, Argus, and hundreds of settlements and tombs. Just right next to the tomb of Clytemnestra, there is a tomb of Aegisthus, built around 1470 BC. There are actually nine outstanding examples of these royal tombs. Their most characteristic feature is the impressive facade with the relieving triangle. This triangular gap was to reduce the weight resting on the lintel block, preventing it from cracking. It's Lion Tholos tomb, as it's located near the Lion Gate. It was built around 1400 BC and has unfortunately collapsed, but is estimated to have been 15 meters high. Now we can see up close how enormous the monolithic lintel is. All Tholoi were built out of stone blocks and were later covered with earth. Their domes were constructed by use of corbelling technique. After the burial, this stomion doorway would have been wall shut and the dromos filled with earth. Sadly, we don't know much about Mycenaeans' funerary rituals. Their burial rites probably consisted of libation and sacrifice and different kinds of commemorative actions, such as athletic competitions, chariot races and, of course, erecting and tending tomb markers. About 700 meters away from the citadel, we're entering the most splendid monument of the Mycenaean architecture. Contemporary of the Lion Gate, the treasury of Atreus, is also known as the Tomb of Agamemnon. It's the biggest and the best preserved Mycenaean Tholos tomb. The dromos is 36 meters long and 6 meters wide, lined with ashlar blocks. At the entrance, the outside walls reach 10 meters of height. The facade is 10.5 meters high. The lintel weighs about 120 tons and is around 9 meters long, 5 meters wide and 1.2 meters high, which makes it the largest in the world. Ek 
Actually, the whole tomb was the largest domed structure in the world for almost 1500 years until the Romans erected Pantheon. The burial chamber has 14.6 meters in diameter and is 13.5 meters high. It's constructed with 33 cobalt courses. All these wonderful structures were erected in the times of Ramses the Great. The smaller version of the main entrance leads to the side chamber. It probably contained burials and the main chamber existed for ritual use. The destruction of the Mycenae is as mysterious as its origins. Probably the invasion of Dorians from the north and natural disasters resulted in the breakup of the Mycenaean state. According to Greek traditions, the period of prosperity and cultural development in the Peloponnese was closely linked to great heroes like Theseus, Heracles, Achilles and Agamemnon. The fall of Mycenaean civilization initiated a new era known as the Age of Humans. We have to bear in mind that for ancient Greeks like Pausanias or Homer, the Mycenaeans were already a distant civilization, almost mythical and highly admired. We can observe that in Homer's Iliad and Odyssey, where he describes Mycenae as rich in gold, with well-built citadels and broad roads. We are passing by another Mycenaean settlement called Tyrins, from which mythical hero Heracles performed his twelve labors. During my next visit to Peloponnese I'll surely take a closer look into this marvelous ancient site. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel and see you on another ancient site!